Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Iron Man. And last video, we finally finished the God Sword Blade from Sarah. Here's the final look at the collection log. Yeah, 1011 kills. We finished off finally getting the God Sword Chart 3. We made the Bandless God Sword, stored it in the stash unit, and essentially freed up four slots from the looting bag. So what is the plan now? Well, first things first, before we move on from God Wars, I still want to get one Arma Casey because we need that task for the Fremnik Elite Diary. There's a task to kill each of the God Wars generals. So we'll get one Arma Casey. I'll probably just use the ACB and brute force it. Uh, we have to collect all of our stuff back from his Hispori first. Uh, this is everything that we have in here. So I guess I'll clean back these items, get a loon bag, put them all back in there, and I'll see you back once we're getting into Arma. We're going to Blast Furnace to make a Mithril Grapple because you need one to actually get into the Armadillo area of God Wars. If I ever were to grind out Arma, I would definitely want to get the Fletching Cape first because with the Fletching Cape, you can search it three times a day for a free Mithril Grapple rather than having to come here every time and get all the ingredients to actually make the Myth Grapple. Especially with Arma because KC takes a while, so you want to cut down on that time as much as you can. Alright, these ratios are probably way off, but like I said, we're only here for one kill, maybe two if I'm feeling it, but Arma's a really risky boss if you die, so not trying to push it, we just need to get the diary done. Okay, so we use the grapple to get over, and then I guess I could just equip the Diamond Bolts E and drop the grapple, and then if you need to go back over, there's grapples in this crate over here. Unfortunately, I can't use the blowpipe to get KC because I'm using the ACB as my armadillo item. So if I unequip it and put the blowpipe on, then I will be taking some damage from all these monsters around me, which will start attacking me. Okay, so I'll be doing a very, very basic method. All I'm gonna do is hit armor once and then walk under, and that way we can trade one-to-one -one hits. Uh, and I have my quick prayer set to uh, missile, steel skin, and eagle eye. I'll just be camping that the whole time. Okay, there we go. That was a lot more difficult than it probably should have been, but we got the, uh, the task done, so I don't even know which one I'm attacking here. Is that the mage? Yeah, it's the mage. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter at this point anyways, but yeah, needless to say, I will not be staying for a second kill. I'm not even praying the right thing. Okay. <laughs> I will not be staying for a second kill here, but uh, I'm glad we got the one task done. We also got some Addy bars while doing this, so I'll be making those into darts for the blowpipe right now. Alright, so as we're making these, I want to talk about the next plans for the account. So, what I originally wanted to do was go back and finish 99 construction, and then maybe try out the gauntlet for a bit. Um, because once we do construction, we'll get a lot of crystal shards from doing that. And theoretically, if we do get the Blade of Saldor, uh, we could end up using those crystals. Oh, <laughs> unlucky timing. We can end up using those shards for the blade to get the unlimited charges on it with the 1000 shards. But before I do the gauntlet, uh, I think it'd be nice to have the Dex Prayer Scroll. And I've also just been wanting to raid for a long time. I want to get 95 Slayer for the Lance, but you know, at this point, 95 Slayer is so far away and I just want to have fun and start raiding. I'm not gonna like commit to like going for a Tebow or a thousand KC or anything. Um, but I at least just want to try out raids for a bit, see how it is on a UIM, and explain some of the mechanics that would be different on a UIM versus a regular account. Oh yeah, and if we do end up unlocking Rigor, then we could just use that to get the Lance easier, because that'll be really nice for Hydra to have that pre unlocked. Oh yeah, and going back to the idea of doing the Gauntlet, I've never done the Gauntlet on any account before, um, so I guess I'll be learning on this account. It's really nice because they hold all of your items for you, even as a UIM when you go in there. And I think it'd be fun to make a video out of that, like learning the Gauntlet and doing maybe 50 KC or something, and also getting one corrupt KC. Hopefully it's not too difficult for me because I'm not good at the game, for those of you that may not know that, I just play a lot. Anyways, point being is that I want to start raiding now, and the last thing I want to do before we can actually start raiding is get the Western Province's Hard Diary done and that way we can get a lead void. So we have a few tasks left to go in here with the most annoying one being doing the chompy bird kills. I actually got all the pest control points that I'll need to upgrade my void to elite void because I knew in the future I would appreciate having that and not have to worry about going back to pest control. After two and a half days of gaming at pest control, it's over. We never ever have to come back to pest control ever again. And then once we get the Western hard diary done, we'll be able to just turn the points right away uh, to switch the top and the bottom in for Elite Void. So once we get this diary done, we can just upgrade the void straight away. Dude, what's the point of this guy even? All he does is sell like dumb cosmetic items that no one cares about because they're not efficient. There's actually a lot of really cool shields. I swear to God, I've messed this up on like two accounts before getting the wrong thing. Uh... 
Okay, I think I did it right. Yeah? Nice, cool. Okay, next is pickpocket a gnome. Catch a monkfish, cook a monkfish. Wait, are there really people that cook on this range, like all the way from that bank over there? I too vaguely remember what it was like to enjoy the game and just play for fun. Addy Orr has been mined. Dude, what kind of dialogue is this? Could I have a go with your bird? You know, taken out of context, that sounds a little bit suggestive. Okay, there's the dashing kebit caught. And the only task we have left now is the one that's going to be the least amount of fun, which is uh, to get the Chompy Bird kills. I mean, to get 300 kills total. To kill Chompies, we need the Ogre Bow, which we could buy from Rands for 500-something GP, so we'll buy the bow. And then we have to make the arrows, although because we have the Western Medium, uh, we get 50 arrows per day for free. And we can check our current kills with the bow as well. We're currently at 126. Um, I doubt 50 will get us all the way to 300, but actually maybe it will. I don't know. We'll see. And then we can just do the drop trick to get multiple of these ogre bellows. Okay, so this honestly doesn't matter that much, but I used to see people argue about this all the time, and it really doesn't matter. Like, me taking the time to explain this takes more time than the amount of time you would save from this. But the accuracy boost of Void used to not stack with ogre bows, um, but Mod Ash confirmed that that was changed in July of 2019. But now Void does work with the ogre bow, so... That's what I'll be using to hunt these chompies here. Yo, I think I found Rarg's family. Over here we have Garg, and over there we got Skarg. And they missed their brother Rarg, he's been gone for so long now. We're pretty much out of arrows now, but we managed to get up to 225. So maybe another like 50, 200 more arrows. I'll go make those right now. Oh, actually we can just buy the logs from this guy here. Very niche use of this location here, but there's wolf bones that spawn all around here. So we can just pick these up and use these instead of wasting time killing wolves. Okay, we'll ask for a hat, and we have the 300 KC on the bow, and he gives us a bunch of hats, which we're just gonna drop, but that is the last task done. I just skipped through the dialogue there. Here's what it looks like, by the way. Very impressive. And that is the Western Province's hard diary done. And we get probably the coolest achievement diary reward there is in terms of just how it looks get the gnome child banner. I really wish this was the elite diary reward just so that you can like max out and have a gnome child rather than whatever the purple thing is. But yeah, I'll put all the rewards on screen like I usually do. Um, I guess really the main thing that's worth pointing out is that we can upgrade to elite void now for 200 points per piece. So 400 pest points in total. Uh, what else is important? The private hunter area, if I ever want to hunt chins for Arma. Uh, Crystal Halberd is kind of good too, I guess. Uh, that's really all that's relevant, mainly just the Elite Void. And we get the XP Lamp going into Herblor, 15k XP. Let's get our Elite Void now. Alright, so we'll use the Void Knight top on the Void Knight. No? Okay. On this Void Knight. Yeah, okay, there's the bottom piece and the top piece. And there's our Elite Void. We actually still have a few points left over too, I think. Uh, I probably won't come back here. I don't know, I might come back here at some point for a little bit. If I need to train Fletching, maybe. Uh, but there it is. We got Elite Void on the Ultimate Iron Man. Elite Void is really, really good. And that's probably what we'll end up using once we go back to Vorkath to get another head for the Rangecape. Once we get the Rangecape, uh, that's pretty far in the future. Actually, maybe it's not that far in the future. <laughs> but over the regular Void, the Elite Void gives a plus six pair bonus and 2.5% bonus to magic and range. And this is really, really nice for raids because we can minimize the amount of inventory space that we'll have to use for gear because you just wear the gloves, the top and the bottom, and then you switch the three helms with each other for range, melee, and magic. So it's really, really, really nice for UIM. Oh yeah, and the best part about it is we can store it in the POH just like we could with the regular Void, just like that. If you go in here, you can see there's two different slots, one for regular void and one for elite void. So, I mean, I guess technically we could go get another void set just to fill out that slot, but I really have better things I could be doing with my time. Says the guy playing the 20 year old medieval children's fantasy role playing game. Anyways, for the rest of the night while I AFK, while I edit and stuff, I'm going to go over fish sacred eels, keep on working towards 99 cooking because at this point we're like... 20 hours away of sacred eel fishing for that level and tomorrow we start raiding and i'll introduce you all to the squad boys we're about ready to start raiding about half an hour here uh i guess i'm supposed to start saying boys since we're gonna be starting raiding so i guess i'll try again to the habit of doing that let's go boys all right first thing after we open this easy clue 
is, ooh, do we have that? Uh, we have to get the D pick. It's in the stash unit at the soul altar with the two other items, but we're gonna suicide with the D pick and leave the two other items, which are the rune boots and the Nezi. We're gonna leave that inside of his quarry. Oh, dude, we actually just finished the Banos book. Oh, sweet, okay. I'll put the stats on screen of what the Banos book is, but it gives the plus five prayer bonus like all the other books and it has a plus two strength bonus. So probably will never be useful. But thank you, Genie. Yeah, this is quite the run to get up here, but we got our D-Pick now, and there's one more stash unit we have to go to. I'm gonna get the Dragon Defender out of this stash unit. I could just get a throwaway Dragon Defender because I do have the Attack Cape, which gives unlimited Warrior Skill tokens, but this is a lot less effort. And Raids is a safe death, so when I have these items in Hispori and I die in Raids, they will not be lost. Anywhere that's safe for a hardcore to die at is safe for items that are in a death place. I realize I don't have enough Nightmare Zone points to get a Salve EI for Mystic, so I guess I'll just have the Fury. I mean, I guess it's better to have more inventory space anyways. That's my excuse. Okay, just bought runes for Water Strike. I have me runes in here, which count as Water Runes and E. Yeah, all these Mud Runes are from when we killed all the Spiritual Mages gang cases for Sarah. Oh, I just realized I grabbed the Barrow's Gloves out. I think I'm gonna, I guess I have to teleport to Yanel and buy Nature Rune and then Elk them because it's, yeah, I'm not gonna keep those in my inventory. We need the Void Gloves. Okay, we're gonna grab our Mole Pet out of here for good luck. We got Guacamole and um, I know it's pretty scuffed. I tried to get as much inventory space open as possible, especially while I'm learning. Uh, we're purposely not doing any shaman raids so that way you don't have to waste an inventory slot for antidotes. The reason why my potions are all in one dose is so that way after every single raid I won't have to throw out any leftover one, two, or three dose potions because as you can see right now I'm getting a little bit low on these so we'll have to make some more eventually. On this account we've only done one raid so far and that was just the one for the diary. Uh, but from that 1kc, we got the 1 out of 10 chance for the raid to teleport, so we can go right there conveniently. And just as a little bit of background knowledge, I have about 30 raids kc across all my accounts, so I guess I know the basics. I know a lot of the rooms, I don't know all the rooms. But the goal with raids on this account will not be to finish raids. Uh, the main goal that I want to get done is to finish the prayer book, so obviously preserve will be really easy to get. Uh, but these two could take a while. So my plan is to move on either once we finish all these prayers or once I get bored. And I guess I should find something to do in between while we're not raiding. Anyways, uh, we are ready to start the raids. They're all okay with carrying me because that's pretty much what's gonna be happening here. Very nice of them, I, I appreciate them very much. They're all so sweet. Okay, this is more for like personal reference for the future, maybe anyone doing it on their UIM, but here's my final setup and everything, so. There's a lot of things that should and probably will eventually be replaced out, but this is what we're starting with. Hey, can we can we all like line up here real quick? Oh, hey, you're here. Hey, hey. Where are we lining up? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, just yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, just just want to do something real quick. Before we start, over the course of however long I play this account, or any account I end up raiding on, I'll be raiding with the same group of people for a long time. Of course, not all of them will always be on at the same time, but I may as well introduce all of them together right now. I've known all these guys for a while, and almost all of them are wonderful people. So even though they're not all here now, I think it's best that you all get to meet the squad. First up, we have who you might consider to be the leader of our team, Famwell aka recently Maxwell, aka Plank. Although you can call him whenever you want, just don't call him late for dinner. He's also very humble. You can see him taking a picture with one of his nerdy fans right here. Next up is Mint, the Mint main. He likes pop punk and skateboarding. And after running away from mall security guards with the girl from the rock show, he likes to sit in the corner eating pizza with all of his real friends in the summer as they talk about how much they hate their hometown. He also has a cool car. I'm laughing. That's mint. <laughs> then we've got Puff, the one Puff wonder, who's actually just two 78 year old Korean women in a man suit. He likes shooting moose and gathering firewood for his igloo. Oh yeah, and he's actually Canadian. And he introduced me to chicken nuggets with honey dill sauce. Next is Zach X Ion. Zach is not his real name, but we all call him Zach anyways. In his spare time, he enjoys inserting frogs into old school RuneScape pictures, and he's looking forward to graduating middle school very soon. Zach also happens to hold the record for the fastest OSRSCC ban. And here's a completely non-photoshopped clip of Famwell helping Zach obtain the record.
There's Dr. Forgone King. Some people call him Dragon for some reason, I have no idea why, but he's going to be doing a lot of scouting and hanging out with us as he learns how to raid. The Doctor is unanimously disliked within the UIM community for his opinion that the looting bag is an unnecessary crutch for the Ultimate Iron Man game mode and chooses to play his own without one. He also has a bird named Carl. Zalt. There's probably nothing I'd be able to say about him that'd be allowed to be put on YouTube. So he's literally saying that I'm there's nothing else interesting about me other than me being racist. There's Corkam. He's from the South and loves a good Bud Light or a 40 ounce malt liquor. Liquor? <laughs> I barely know her. We've also got Zozo. He's also from the South. Similar to Steve Irwin, Zozo is a natural hunter and preys upon helpless Zynga stack of boxes. And then last and also least, there's Wet Dirt Kip. Some might know him as the beans of the team, some might know him as the son of Mod Mark, and others might just simply know him as Spencer from iCarly. We can go, we don't have to stand here, it's just for one second. Oh, okay. <laughs> what happens if I walk here? Damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, what happens over here? Just... Watch out, watch out! <laughs> hey, Famwell. What's up? Nice cape, bro. I'm logging. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cutout of the Max Cheesecake. The old one used to look really ugly. It's like McDonald's style. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Jester cake. Oh, unlucky. Actually, give me an elite. Wow, 10k points. I guess I'll just drop the herbs. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Leroy <Lisa. Lee> Jenkins! <laughs> Lee Jenkins! <laughs> what are you doing to that mole? <laughs> he looks like he's holding your feet. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm, wait. Okay. <sighs> oh, I should. I didn't realize I was recording. Fuck. Always unlucky. I know. I'm never lucky, I read. Oh, Ooh, Tor stole. Ooh, I need one of those. Yeah, that would some, actually be really good for you. I need some toilet paper. I gotta pick up my potions, too. I almost did that. I guess I should have said this before, but I'll be free for all if that's cool with you guys. No, yeah, of course. Okay. You have awfully low hit points there, fam. Well, <laughs> yeah, it happens. Probably drink the yellow potion in here. <laughs> What's your Good gear? Luck. That was sick. Why? 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 I'm getting more and more points each raid, so I'm glad about that. Could still be torn. Yeah. Nope. Sad. Yo, Zach, grad on Infernal Cape and Dust. Good job, man. I didn't know you were so good at the game. Okay, we're done raiding for now. We're gonna come back to it in like eight or nine hours or something tonight. A couple things I want to point out though is that they try to let me get the overload and the enhance for Mutadile, and we always get Mutadile raids as well. Um, but the last raid, I wasn't able to get it, and I had to make the lower tier overload, uh, which I guess didn't seem like even made that much of a difference, especially since that last raid. I got more points than the other ones, but 90 Herblore would be nice to have for raids in the future. So uh, I guess whenever we're not raiding at the last raid of the day, maybe I'll use up these herbs to make some potions out, like whatever I get at the end. Otherwise, I've just been dropping all of them over to my main. I've been trying to think of what to do while we're not raiding that's just not as AFK as Sacred Eel Fishing, so I think what I might start doing is agility because we eventually need to get 88 agility for the Karulm dungeon shortcut for Hydra so maybe I'll just do rooftop agility and trade in uh, the marks of grace as I get them yeah we'll do that so next clip you probably see me back with will probably be the agility level all right there we go a couple hours later 83 agility whoa and that is new cool all right we are back to raids now. 1200 KC! Hey, congrats. And an elite! Oh, I got elite too. It's a lot hey. of soul runes, holy crap. Oh, Lava Dragon Isle, nice. <laughs> Yo, I got Torn Prayer Scroll preserved yeah, unlocked. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, let's go, boys! The only time this toilet paper will actually be useful. So, uh, when you read this, this will unlock the Preserve Prayer. And the Preserve Prayer makes your boosted stats last 50% longer. So when you uh, use like super combats or range potions or whatever. Let's read it. Hey, we got Preserve. Yeah, one third of the way there. <laughs> Easy. Because that's how it works. I go through a lot more charges on the trident than I do with the blowpipe, so what I could do instead of uh, having to take everything off his spore all over again to get more scales, or instead of having to fish more scales, I could just uncharge this 
and use some of these scales to recharge up the trident again and then just put these back in the blowpipe. Well, that was the first day of raiding. We got 30k herbal XP today and it's kind of hard to coordinate the timing uh, with everyone just because like people's work schedules and uh, time zones aren't really much of an issue. But this is what we got from eight raids today. I know it's not that many raids, but you know, I'm still learning average probably like 15 to 17k points per raid, at least near the end. That's what I was starting to get. So yeah, we unlocked preserve today. We got an elite clue that we can't do. I'm not really sure when to end this video. Like I don't know what a good milestone would be. Maybe like 25 raids or something. Or if we get purple. If I get purple, that'll just be like the end of the video. That will be a great wrap up to a video, but I don't actually expect to get one for a long time. We'll just do a couple more days of raids and then call it a video there. I don't know, like realistically, eight raids should take like four hours, but it took us a lot longer because um, I don't know, we'd just be in a voice call and we'd, well, oops, and we'd just like watch Famal do his master clue and get all hype over it and stuff, and it probably would take like an hour just to do one raid, but we're having fun and that's what matters most. This is a brand new day. I'm ready for a fun day of raiding today. Look, you know I'm serious about raiding now because I switched the left click from the Mounted Xerix from the Glade to the Honor, which is the Raid's Teleport. That's how you really know things are getting real now. Look at this absolute Chad here with his Infernal Cape. I feel like I'm being carried so hard, man. All these strong, handsome young men just carrying me through all these raids. Usually scuffed equals stuff, but not this time, I guess. I'll do a few laps of the Prifnas course here and there when I don't want to commit to grinding out 10 marks of grace and just doing maybe a few while we're trying to find a team member or something. I've actually only ever done one lap of this course ever, which was when I first unlocked Prifnas, so I don't exactly know how it goes, but I know you have to pay a little bit more attention and like look at the portals or something, but I'll just mess around here and drop the shards when I'm done if I get any. Oh yeah, that's the portal thing. You like skip some sections of the course to get to the end faster, I guess. Always oh, so unlucky. Yeah, it's nice having these little breaks between raids because, for example, we just got these dwarf weeds and could easily re-up on the range pots without having to re-suicide. Dude, I just realized that's actually a lot of ranging potions. Like, I probably go through maybe two doses per raid or something. That's really good. I probably won't have to worry about supplies uh, because I try to minimize the use of my own personal supplies and use the raid supplies as much as I can. Nice. Oh yeah, that was a PB. Oh, I got death wounds so I could just recharge my trident with those. Ooh, dark relic. That's really good XP for you, I am. Hey, more toilet paper. Yo, this torn scroll is worth 48k, so it's definitely an elk. Yo, I actually need that snapdragon for restores. I'm gonna go make some restores real quick. Salty boy. Uh, the purples were the friends we made along the way. Here's a clip that highlights a day in the life of an ultimate Iron Man. I'm currently in between raid sessions, using up these Eddy ores to make Eddy bars to make Eddy darts for the blowpipe. Like I mentioned earlier, raids is really nice because a lot of the drops that I'm getting from raids, I could just use them up right away and get more supplies to do even more raids, rather than having to like take a break and get all my stuff from Hespori and go gather whatever supply I need. I can just use up all these supplies that I get from raids while I'm not raiding. And yeah, this is a method by the way. You can put your ores on the Blast Furnace conveyor belt on a non-Blast Furnace world, then hop to a Blast Furnace world, and your ores will be made into bars even without money in the coffer. Method's really not worth it if you're not a UIM, but maybe that could help some low-level Iron Man out. Yeah, dude, a thousand darts is gonna go a very long way in raids. Well, I say that now, wait until we get to like 100 plus KC, but it feels like that lasts a while. It probably only took like 15, 20 minutes at Blast Furnace to make all these. Versus killing Aviantes, I think I get maybe 1,000 to 1,500 darts worth of bars per hour. That's not including actually making them either. All right, I think this will be a good place to wrap the video. Dude, I've been having a lot of fun with raids, like not just raids, but the whole like vibe around raids, like kind of just getting together with the homies whenever anyone's free, and then in the meantime, you know, the sacred eel fishing to AFK and work towards 99 cooking, which were like, was it like 10 hours of sacred eels away from 99? We got the agility going on, we'll probably get a couple more agility levels over the next week as well. And I don't know, man, it's been a lot of fun. I know we only did 18 raids, but like I kind of mentioned before, we probably average like an hour per raid over the course of time, just because we'll just stand outside the Ohm room for like 15 minutes just watching stupid videos. And we waste a lot of time, but it's been a lot of fun. I really feel like right now is kind of the point of this series. And this is kind of where like, 
the start of the series has always been leading up to. We're not grinding out one specific skill for a long time, I'm just kind of doing what I feel like, which isn't really a thing UIMs get to do that often. I'm just kind of going all over the place doing whatever I feel like at the time. This video is meant to be more of like an introduction to raids on the UIM, but next video, once I kind of get more comfortable with raids and I really know what I'm doing, I want to start out the video by explaining what's so different about raiding on a UIM versus other kinds of accounts, because that's also kind of the main point of the series, is to log my adventures playing as an Ultimate Iron Man and share with you the things that I've learned about this game that I love and have known and played since I was a kid. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you again next time. Tell me, oh yeah, I'm not sure if I can put anything into YouTube about you because it'll just be against TOS. So he's literally just saying there's nothing interesting about me other than me being racist. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it, you said it.